Hi guys, my name is Dukhap Sabudwani and welcome to the new video on AWS Lambda method of invocation. In this video, we are going to see that what are the ways that we can start the Lambda or we can trigger the Lambda. The first method of invocation which we are going to talk about is Lambda polling. What happen in case of Lambda polling is let's say we have a data, it can be a single data or it can be a batch of data. Now we want Lambda to process this data. Then what the Lambda is going to do is because the data is going to be in continuous format it is either going to go to the queue or it will be a part of data stream the lambda internally is going to pull continuous this queue for the data stream and whenever the data is going to reach to this queue and data stream the lambda is going to process that data and this is how because the lambda is continuously pulling the data so this method of invocation is known as lambda pulling the best example which we can kind of talk about is aws sqs what happen in case of AWS SQS whenever there is a data is going to come to AWS SQS the lambda is internally going to continuously pull this SQS and once the data reaches to the SQS the lambda will take that message the process the message and it is going to send a response back to the SQS that this message has been fulfilled another method of invocation which is known as event driven invocation and what happen in case of event driven invocation is we will have an event source which is responsible for kind of trigger the lambda and then we have the lambda which is responsible for working on that event whenever there is an event so it's going to generate the event the lambda will invoke and it is going to take that event and process the event now the event driven invocation is again classified into two types so first type is known as synchronous and another one is known as unsynchronous what happen in case of synchronous whenever the event source is going to generate the event it is just like a request and response pattern the request has been initiated the lambda is going to process the request until the time the request is not fulfilled the event service will be blocked and whenever the lambda is completing the request it is going to send the response back to the event source and then event source will be unblocked a good example can be an api gateway what happened when there is a web client which is going to talk to this api gateway when the when it is going to call an http request it is going to trigger the lambda and lambda is going to process until the time the entire process is not complete the web client will be blocked it is still waiting for the response when the lambda is going to complete it is going to send back the response to the api gateway and from the api gateway it will get back to the http client and once the http client will get the response it will be unblocked now what would happen in case of let's say lambda got failed because of some reason it can be a time order it can be some something else then it is the responsibility of http client who is initiating this request to make a retrieve on the other end there is a, another mechanism which we are called as asynchronous and what happened in case of asynchronous is we have this event source and event source will delegate his event kind of functionality to an event queue and it's just going to pass the message to the event queue now it's the responsibility of event queue to process this message and the event queue will immediately send feed feedback to the event source that your message is being processed uh, now whatever whatever going to happen to this message whether the message is going to be successful or it's going to be fail the event source will not get any notification on that part now it's a responsibility of event queue to process this message so what the event queue will going to do is is going to call the lambda and lambda is going is getting invoked and the lambda is going to process the message and lambda is going to be successful or fail now in case of any failure it because it's a responsibility of event queue to kind of a, make to a retrieve then event queue is going to make another call to this lambda and is going to say the message is same message is available would you like to make another try the lambda will be say okay i want to make a try and the lambda is going to process now the event queue is going to make maximum two attempt to send the same message again and again now it's a responsibility of lambda developer who is going to write a code in such a way that it should maintain the consistency in this application because the same message is going to repeat two times now it's a responsibility of developer to make sure that the code is written such a way that it should support the item dependency now after the two retrieval if the match is successful it will be moved out of the queue and if the message is going to fail it is again move out of the queue now depending on the lambda configuration whether the lambda is supporting dead letter queue or not if it is supporting then the message will move to the dead letter queue otherwise the measure the otherwise the message will be gone this is the entire thing about the uh, method of invocation in adobe lambda hope you like this video please don't forget to hit and like and subscribe button in the next video we are going to see a practical example of how we can implement this uh, adobe's sqa and how we can integrate this to lambda using cdk framework and how we can test this thing locally so thanks for watching this video hope you like it